Hey guys, Webhead Gaming here, and welcome back to Mega Man X3. So now we are at Neon Tiger stage, which is the jungle theme stage of the game. And the one thing I want to comment on right away is the music that plays here. If any of you have ever heard of, heard of the song My Michelle by Guns N' Roses and then listen to this, you'll notice that they sound very similar to one another. In fact, the melody here is pretty much exactly the same as the guitar with Rift in My Michelle. Capcom denies this and says that this was a coincidence that the song sounds like My Michelle, but I sincerely doubt that they were clearly inspired by Guns N' Roses when it came to uh, making the music for Neon Tiger stage. This won't be the only time that we have a Guns N' Roses, Roses reference in an X game. In X5, for some reason in the North American release, they named all of the Mavericks in that game after Guns N' Roses members, so what the hell. We're not getting to X5 for a long while, but just that I thought I should let you guys know. Neon Tiger stage ranks up there as being one of the longest stages, one of the draggiest stages. However, I find it more tolerable than Tunnel Rhino stage because I actually like the music that the music that plays here compared to the god awful one in Tunnel Rhino stage. And yeah, right there, use the Tornado Fang to break through that cracked wall. Get up here, use the upward air dash, and you'll find yourself another Dr. Light capsule, which contains the arm parts. The arm parts here are probably the weakest out of the SNES trilogy. In X1, you had a pink shot that was more powerful than your standard charge shot. That was pretty cool. Uh, the double shot in X2 was kind of awkward to use because you got to stand still, but it was still pretty useful. It, was, it still did a lot of damage. The one here in X3, not only doesn't feel like does it feel like it doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as the past two, but it's just super awkward to use. They have this gimmick to where if you tap the button twice at the precise moment, you'll do this super powerful charge shot that will cover like the entire screen with energy balls, but it's just it's just really awkward to use and it doesn't feel any more powerful than a standard shot. Uh if you if you're not doing this, then you'll just simply fire out these fire out these two spiring energy balls that don't feel any stronger than a mid-charge shot. And the second fire will either be a mid-charge shot or a fully charged shot, depending on how uh, lo long you charged up the arm parts for. And as always, you can still use fully charged uh, shots for your weapons. So that's nice. This is... Sub boss here can drag out and be very boring to fight because he constantly burrows himself into the ground and he'll show up at random intervals, constantly firing out these bouncing mines all over the place. And uh, if you're not using a very strong weapon, it could be a hassle to fight. The problem with this is if you're using the charged X Buster, like I was trying to do, it's so in inaccurate because the only way you're gonna hit this thing is through the head. And anywhere else won't count, it'll just deflect off the body. And because the hitbox of the charge shot is so huge, chances are you're not going to be able to get a lot of hits in. Thankfully though, with the preciseness of the normal shots, we're able to take it out. If you want the stage to drag out even more, then uh, hope that Bite shows up, because he actually shows up later on, uh, if he feels like it or not, so yay. Spoiler worse, he doesn't show up here. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I really got not, not much else to say about this stage. It's not too annoying. It's just It just drags on and on and on. Even more, I think this is probably the longest out of the eight main stages. So I know I probably talked about this earlier, but I think the soundtrack in this game is pretty hit and miss. I mean, there are actually two different versions of the soundtrack of this game, depending on what version that you're playing. Uh, the SNES version is often deemed to be inferior to the PS1, Sega Saturn, PC version of the soundtrack. 
Me personally, it's really hit and miss. Uh, some songs I like better in the SNES version, other songs I like better in the uh, enhanced port version. It really all depends on what you prefer, really. I don't really mind the fact that the guitar is so heavy in X3, since maybe it's because I'm a rock guy and I like listening, listening to rock music, but I don't know, I just, I don't really mind the soundtrack that much. I don't think it's that repetitive. I think some songs are pretty cool. Neon Tiger song, for example, I actually like. So, I don't know. I think the soundtrack's not as bad. Uh, it's better than X2, but definitely not as good as X1. So now we are at Neon Tiger himself, and he is incredibly, pathetically easy with the spinning blade. Because he'll just constantly go to the left and right as you hit him and hit him and hit him until he dies. Before you enter here, make sure you go up to the top of the boss door because a heart tank will appear there and you may notice there was also a sub tank earlier in this stage you can get that by the upward air dash it's pretty easy to spot you shouldn't really miss it but regardless neon tiger is pathetically easy even without his weakness i find that with enough practice he's incredibly easy to take out if you're not using his weakness he will fire race flashers all over the place and uh they are actually pretty easy when you get the hang of them and then when he's at half health, he'll do this desperation attack where he'll charge up and he'll try and ram at you and then jump upwards. So uh, be careful with that. Otherwise, he's a pretty easy boss, especially if you have the spinning blade, which makes him a joke. By defeating Neon Tiger, we get the Ray Splasher. It's, it's okay, but, you know, it's very inaccurate. I find it to be very inaccurate and kind of awkward to use. It's great for Blind and Gravity Beetle, and that's about it, really. Actually, no, it's great for some of the other bosses, but for the most part, it's great against Gravity Beetle, who, guess what, we're taking on next. Yay! Enjoy the cutscene. Gravity Beetle's theme is one of my favorite songs in the game, and a prime example as to why I don't think the soundtrack in X3 is as bad as people make it out to be. It's a really good song, and I really like listening to it a lot. This is Gravity Beetle's stage, and uh, it's basically a spaceport, and it's home to one of the most what-the-fuck heart tanks in the game, because it's behind these crates that are indestructible, you can try and destroy them with anything, the charged up weapons, uh, standard weapons, your buster shots, you will not be able to destroy the crates. Uh, the only way to get rid of them is to go to Blast Hornet and clear his stage. Guess who Blast Hornet's weak to? Gravity Beetle. So again, the weakness order is incredibly inconvenient as fuck. The, the reason why there's crates blocking away is supposedly because there's a sub-boss which we won't see in Blast Hornet stage because for some reason Query this stage nullifies that. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And, uh, it delivers these crates to Gravity Beetle stage, so, of course, destroying Blast Hornet will mean that those crates are gone. So this is a ride armor piece that was very annoying to get, and I'm gonna speed up the footage because, ugh. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank God. Fuck that ride armor piece. It was so obnoxious to get during this, re this recording. I don't even know why. Must be the LP curse. Regardless, the rest of the stage is a cakewalk. All of the enemies here, you've pretty much seen before. You know how to deal with them. The only new additions are these robots that transform into spinning wheels when you attack them. Just use charge shots. You'll kill them faster than they can take a pot shot at you. And yeah, I really got not much to say about the stage. It's very easy. It's one of the shorter, shorter stages in the game. And, uh, it's, so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity for a bit. Because it's actually kind of relevant to this video. So, for those of you who have seen the PlayStation conference around a couple days to a week ago, depending on when I upload this, 
Uh, you'll know that X has been revealed as one of the first characters that you can that are going to be on the roster. And uh, how do I feel about this? Well, first off, it's about time that we have the Blue Bomber back in Marvel vs. Capcom. It's been like over a decade since Classic Mega Man has been featured in MVC 2. I know Zero is in MVC 3, but you know, he's technically not the Blue Bomber. He is still a Mega Man character. He still represents the Mega Man series in some fashion. Same with Tron Bond. But he's not like the Blue Bomber, you know? And it's nice to see that the Blue Bomber is back, even though it isn't classic Mega Man. And the thing is, though, at first I was excited about it. The more I start thinking about it as the days go by, I think that it's pretty much a ploy by Capcom to get people to shut up about Mega Man, about them not caring about Mega Man anymore. I mean, let's, let's be real here. That's the only reason why X is here is because, you know, Mega Man fans want Mega Man in some way, shape, or form. They want Capcom to care. And there you go. There's their reason, There's their proof that they care. They brought him in MVC Infinity. Will he be a good character in Infinity? Who knows? Maybe he will. But uh, I'm done rambling about that. We're now at Gravity Beetle. And Gravity Beetle is an absolute joke. An absolute clown with his weakness. Because all he'll do is he'll hop. Hit him again, he'll hop. Hit him again, he'll hop. It's a joke. Just like all of the other Mavericks in the game when you use their weakness on them. If you don't use his weakness, then he is a pain in the ass because he will fling these gravity balls over the place. They're hard to dodge, and it's very annoying. But with the Ray Splasher, he goes down very quickly. He is an absolute joke. I don't get it. Why are the Mavericks in this game so damn allergic to their weakness? It's so sad. It's so fucking sad. But... I ain't, I ain't complaining, I just think it's pretty funny. So by defeating Gravity Beetle, we get the Gravity Well, which is the worst weapon in the game. It really doesn't do anything. It really isn't effective at killing almost anything. It'll kill the smaller enemies, but for pretty much everything else, it absolutely sucks. So I don't recommend using it for anything other than Blast Hornet. I'll see you next time.